hello everyone welcome to the advanced course on etabs so in this lecture we are going to see how etabs is calculating the beam column joint shear capacity uh, as per is 13920 we will see what are the uh, calculations is being done in etabs and we will also see what is the difference uh, with the etabs calculation and the codal provisions okay so this session will be divided into three parts first part will be uh, finding out the uh, effective width of the joint in the second part we will find the capacity as per the etf calculation and then we will see what is the difference in the etf calculation and our uh, uh, codal provisions okay so let's get started so if uh, you are not aware of the joint shear uh, you can say capacity calculation manually uh, please do refer the previous manual calculation lectures i have already explained that here and if you're watching this video in youtube i will uh, request you to visit our uh, android app uh, the link is in the description so that you can uh, you can say know more about our courses and in our courses we have given all the detailed calculations including the manual calculations and the uh, proof checks of the software calculations right so you can have a look on that that may help you okay so uh, now let us let us start uh, this session so here uh, i have turned on the local axis just to uh, make you understand that this column if you see these two columns here so we have this rgb and we all know that blue color axis is nothing but our major axis so here when we have the column which is rectangular so it is pretty clear that the axis which is perpendicular to the you can say major dimension it will be our uh, major axis correct so this axis will be my major axis now in our case this particular this particular uh, uh, column is a rectangular uh, is a square column actually so if you see okay so that's why i have turned on the you can say uh, local axis so that you can easily understand that this blue color axis is our major axis here so in this case in this case this is our major axis okay so about this blue color axis is our major axis fine and about this green axis is our minor axis correct so this will this will be will be needing this uh, information later on so i just uh, uh, informed it at the very beginning okay so there will be no doubt in later on when we'll be seeing the results fine so now what i will do i have already designed it as you have seen in the previous classes so i'll just go to display design info and turn on the longitudinal reinforcement okay fine i will right click on the column and as previous we will go to the top end of the column for this particular combination for any combination you can check actually so all the previous calculations we have checked for this uh, combination and as the joint shear and all other uh, i can say joint related things are being shown in the uh, topmost point of the column so obviously we have will be selecting this column and we'll be going to the top location of this column which is this 2.5 okay i'll go to details and i'll go to the joint shear details fine so here you can see the joint shear uh, capacity joint shear calculation we have seen what is the mistakes done by ETFs that that also we have seen now this capacity how it is calculated and also if you go down you will you will see that the joint area okay the joint width and the you can say the vc also the uh, allowable uh, shear capacity also is calculated okay so now what i will do First of all, we will go by the ETABS process step by step. Correct. So, if you remember, we had uh, as per ETABS calculation, we had uh, two conditions. So, first of all, how we will be checking actually? So, let me turn off the local axis. Yeah. So, here, as we know, that this is my beam one, beam two, beam three beam 4 from our previous calculations we have seen right now here also we are considering the forces from this direction correct so the beams which will be uh, you can say providing or effective in resisting this force is the beam number 3 and beam number 4 
fine and what is the dimension of these beams dimension of these beams if you see all these beams are of 200 by 500 okay these beams also 200 by 500 so and one more thing the dimension of the column if you see it is nothing but 400 by 400 correct so we have a condition is something like this this is a column and we have beams sorry we have beams like this like this okay sorry i have not drawn in the center it will be something around center correct so like this we have the beams correct and all these beams all these beams are of 200 200 200 and this also 200 correct and as it is a square column so this one is nothing but my 400 and this one also we have 400 correct now as my force is coming from this direction so this is my beam 3 this is my beam 4 as my force is coming from this direction suppose so in this case beam 3 and 4 will be effective correct fine okay so now now uh, what will be the vc here what will be the vc here that means the width of column here so as the force is coming from this direction so the bc that is width of column it will be nothing but this dimension which is 400 okay so my bc is equal to 400 mm if i find the width of beam so we have two beams of 200 mm if you have uh, uh, of different uh, you can say dimensions we will be considering the lower one right so here both the beams are of 200 so we will check the width of beam which is nothing but 200 mm correct and hc that means the depth of the beam uh, column which is nothing but here it is 400 mm only so hc is equal to 400 mm correct so now now in our case in our case if you see that here this we had two conditions at a, as per its calculation if you remember that the effective width of the joint bj equal to minimum of bc or bb plus 0.5 hc this was one condition when bc is greater than bb or minimum of bb or bc plus 0 0.5 hc if bc is less than bb correct so when the you can say dimension of the uh, uh, column like right? width of the column uh, is greater than width of the beam okay so this bc is greater than bb in that case we can consider the first one when the bc is less than bb we will be considering the second one right as per ETF's calculation so now in our case uh, if you see in our case bc is greater than bb correct so which case we will be considering which case will be considering obviously we will be considering the case number one this first one this bc is greater than bb so our bj this width of the you can say bj will be minimum of bc which is 400 mm or bb I'll give it like this. BB BB is nothing but uh, 
200 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 8c which is 400 okay so if we calculate so it will be minimum of 400 or here you can say 200 plus 0 0.5 so it is 200 so it will be 400 so in both cases we are getting 400 that means our bj hence bj equal to 400 mm in our case correct so we can say the effective width of the joint is equal to 400 mm correct right now if you want to if you want to find out uh, you can say if you want to find out the effective area of the joint then how we will be calculating how we will be calculating obviously the effective width of the uh, joint multiplied by the depth which is hc correct so you can easily write 400 multiplied by 400 fine so this is nothing but our a e matlab area effective of joint effective area of joint okay so this is what etabs is calculating when your uh, you can say bc is greater than bb you will be calculating this case one using this case case one when it is less than bb you will be considering this uh, you can say case two fine so this way you will be finding out the effective width of the joint for uh, for any of your beam column joints so i hope it is clear to all of you we have already discussed the manual calculations again we are doing it in our model itself correct so uh, this is it for this particular lecture uh, i will see you in the next lecture where we'll be finding out the uh, you can say the if a uh, joint shear capacity of this particular joint okay so see you in the next lecture thank you